guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is loasis, which is commonly known as the lower lower infection. So let's get started. So what is loasis? Loasis, which is also commonly known as the African eyeworm infection, is a disease which is caused by a filarial parasite called loa loa. The parasite is transmitted to humans by the bite of the Chrysops fly, which is endemic to many regions in West and Central Africa. The main manifestations of the disease include transient localized subcutaneous swellings, known as calabar swellings in the patient, and the migration of the adult worm across the subconjunctiva of the patient's eye. So from this definition of loasis, we get that it's a disease which is caused by this parasite called loa loa. So if we take a close look at this image down here, we see what this parasite actually looks like on microscopy. So the disease is actually carried to humans by the Chrysops fly, and this is when the fly comes along and bites the human and transmits these parasites into the human body. And the disease is most commonly found in Africa because these flies are endemic to the West and Central African regions. So the disease actually manifests with two main symptoms, and that is the calabar swellings, which we will explore further in a minute. But then they also have this other very alarming symptom, and that is the presence of these worms, which have the ability to walk across the eyeball. And this is actually a very stressful and very anxious experience for the patient. And this is actually why they come into the hospital pretty freaked out. So now that we know what the basics of loasis is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So as we mentioned in the slide before, humans contract this disease through the Chrysops flyby. So let's start at point number one. It says the Chrysops fly bites the human and takes a blood meal and larvae are deposited into the skin of the human and entered through the wound bite. So when this fly comes along and takes a blood meal, it actually deposits larvae into the skin of this human. So then we move on to number two, which says these larvae actually develop into adult worms and wander through the subcutaneous tissue. So we have the adults in the subcutaneous tissue now. Point number three says the adults produce sheathed eggs that travel to the spinal fluid, blood, urine, sputum, and lungs of the patient. So now we have these adult sheathed microfilaria that travel to through these very fluid-like regions of the body. And then we have another Chrysops fly which comes along and bites the human and takes a blood meal and hereby ingesting all these microfilaria. So we now have another fly which was uninfected which now actually becomes infected because they bit this human. And from here we have the microfilaria which shed their sheets and migrate to the thoracic muscles of the fly. So now we have these microfilaria which travel to the fly's midgut and migrate through the thoracic muscles. And then we have these microfilaria which then develop into larvae. And then we have the further larval development occurring in the fly. And this means the fly can become an infected player. And this usually occurs after 10 to 12 days after the initial infection of these microfilaria. And then we have these larvae developing to the fly's mouth where they can now go on and bite a human and take their first blood meal and infect another human. And this is how the cycle continues. So in this way, the flies become infected and then the humans become infected. And it's just a vicious cycle that carries on. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of this disease. So as we mentioned earlier, the patient will develop something called calabar swellings and the eye worm, which are the two most common symptoms. So the calabar swellings are localized non-tender swellings, which are usually found on the arms and the legs of the patient near the joints. So in this image down here, we actually see what the calabar swelling looks like on the top of the hand. And this is actually another calabar swelling just under the right eye of another patient. So itching can occur around the area of swelling or can occur all over the body. And the eye worm is the visible movement of the adult worm across the surface of the eye. So we actually see this adult eye worm moving across the surface of this eyeball. And the eye worm can cause eye congestion, itching, pain, and light sensitivity. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of loisis. So observation of the adult worms subconjunctively crossing the eye is a pretty obvious diagnosis. Also the identification of an eye worm removed from the eye or the skin. And then finally, we can also do the identification and quantification of the microfilaria 
in the blood by microscopy. So this is where we take a blood sample and then we look at it microscopically for the presence of these lower lower microfilaria and this is actually what the typical aspect would look like. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of loasis. So the surgical removal of the adult worms moving under the skin or across the eye can be done to relieve the patient's stress and anxiety. However, the disease cannot be cured by surgery alone. The medical treatment of choice is diethyl carbamazine, also commonly known as DEC, which can actually kill off the microfilaria as well as the adult worms. Albendazole is also sometimes used in patients who are not cured with multiple DEC treatments and it is also thought to kill off the adult worms. So if we can surgically remove the visible worms, this can be done and it's usually the preferred treatment of choice, but then we also have to supplement the surgical treatment with medical treatment and that's where the DEC as well as albendazole come in. And that brings us to the end of this video on Loasis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.